Hey, Battle Ready family, does God change? No. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, For I, the Lord, change not. God does not change. That's what we're going to be looking at today on Think On This. Welcome to today's Think On This Battle Ready podcast. Please join us as we journey through the written Word of God in biblical truths and spiritual insights. We hope you enjoy today's podcast. God bless you. You know, right now, throughout our nation, there are so much different things going on within the body of Christ. Within this past week, there have been three ministers that have stepped down from ministry because of things within their heart. And the sad thing is, if you really think about it, is I believe what happened is somewhere along the line, we began to conform not the world to the church or to the things of God, but I really believe that we begin to take the things of God and conform them to the world. You can see it all over the place. And the thing that's really disheartening about it all is God doesn't change. I have, I have, I have had conversations with people that have told me, you know, well, yeah, but we're in different times now. We're not in Bible times. And I believe that Jesus understands. And, you know, we have, we have different cultures and we have different time periods and different things like that. But the truth is, God doesn't change. His word says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 18, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if you were to really look at Jesus' ministry, think about it. When Jesus first started, the very first thing that he done in the book of John chapter 2, verse 14 and 16, when he started his ministry, the first thing that was on his agenda was he cleansed the temple. He went into the temple, he grabbed a whip, and he began to whip them, and he began to chase out the people that were selling the money changers. He began to cleanse the temple. Now, God's word says that judgment begins in the house of God. And the very first thing that he did in his ministry was he dealt with the things going on within the church. But some people would say, yeah, but Jesus is love. And he, listen, he is love. And I agree with that. Jesus loves us so much. God loves us so much that he sent his son to die for our sins. Yes, I believe his love is unconditional. The Bible says no height, no depth, no breadth, no width, no principality, no authority. Nothing will separate us from the love of God. But our sins will separate us from him. Our sins. He loves us unconditionally no matter what. His love is unconditional. I understand that. But if you look in Jesus' ministry, yes, he sat with the sinners. I hear, I hear so many people say this. Well, Jesus sat with the sinners. Yes, he did. But he did not sin with them. Did you know that in Jesus' time of ministry, twice he said, go and sin no more. As a matter of fact, this statement is only said twice throughout the whole New Testament. And it's said to Jesus. And it's done in two different incidences. One with the man that was lame at the pool of Bethsaida. And the nether was the woman who was caught in adultery. But you got to understand something. These two incidences carry significant meaning. One was in the physical. One was in the spiritual. He didn't have to say it repeatedly everywhere he went. He didn't have to say it when he sat with the Pharisees and the sinners in their homes. He didn't have to say it. He only had to say it too because it it, it applies to all things in matter, whether in the in the whether in the the flesh or whether in the spirit. It doesn't matter. The point is when Jesus addressed sin, yes, he done it out of love. But when he addressed sin, he told them, "Go and sin no more." When the woman that was caught in adultery, when they brought her to Jesus. Jesus wrote in the sand and the Bible says he looked at her and he said, after all, the, from the oldest to the youngest, after they all left, when he wrote in the sand, the Bible says he looked at the woman that was caught in adultery and he said, where are thy accusers? And she said, they're all gone. None, there's none here. And Jesus looks at her and says, and neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Jesus didn't condone her sin. Jesus confronted her sin, but he loved her as a sinner. And from that moment on, she did not sin no more. The Bible does not record anywhere in the Bible that Mary Magdalene sinned anymore, but she devoted her life to Jesus Christ and she followed him because she knew that he changed her life. The man at the pool of Bethsaida, some scholars say that he was in sin and the reason why he was lame was because it was a result of sin. And when Jesus addressed this, this is the physical, when he addressed it, he told him, go and sin no more. So Jesus, yes, he sat with the sinners. But listen, the point I'm trying to make is this. Jesus did not conform to any situation. 
When he sat with the sinners, he did not sit down and conform to their ideology. No, he steadfastly stayed in the integrity of who he was and the purpose that God sent him there to do. When he first started his ministry, he cleansed the temple. And if Jesus changed, then we would see that change throughout his three and a half years of ministry. We would see him begin to change and, and say, well, you know, it's okay that God understands that, you know, you think you're a man when you're a woman or you think you're a woman when you're a man. It's okay, you know, if you're unfaithful or it's okay if you drink or if it's okay if you do drugs or it's okay if you gamble. God understands and his love is unconditional. If that was the truth, I have a question for you. If that was the truth, why was it in Matthew 21, at the end of his ministry, he went back into the temple and he cleansed it once again? He did not change. He did not conform to no, ideo no ideology. He did not conform to the culture of the Roman Empire. He said, as a matter of fact, he said, render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. So we cannot use this stinking thinking that God understands. God understands. But he is a holy God, he is a righteous God, and as I said in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, he is the Lord and he changes not. What God calls sin is sin, and it doesn't matter how we interpret it. The Bible says in 2 Peter that we are not, that the, the, the things of God are not given to us for self-interpretation. It's red, it's down in black and white. If God said it's wrong, it's wrong. But there's hope. We just gotta let go and let God. You know, the thing is, I've been spending this last month really reflecting on the time that Jesus got a hold of me. And I, I, and I long to go back to that place. I long to, to return to my first love and do my first works over. And I believe there are so many ministers right now that are making that journey back. Like the book of Isaiah says, ask for the ancient past and I will give them to you. God wants us to return to him. We cannot conform to the world. The Bible says, be you therefore transformed. Be not conformed, but be you therefore transformed by the renewing of your mind. We are to be transformed. And if we got so much Jesus in us, we're not going to want to do these things of this world. How, how to check? Listen, a brother told me this last night. He said, if you were to seriously ask an individual, if somebody was to be with you the whole day, in public and in private, would you reflect Christ at all times? You see, our actions need to speak louder than our words. Jesus lived, loved, and died for us. And he did not change. And so I believe it's high time that we as the body of Christ, we turn to our first love and do our first works over. And I believe it's high time that we of the body of Christ lay down this foolish thinking, this foolish ideology that Jesus understands and that the times have changed. The culture has changed. We need to be culture sensitive to the things now in 2024. Wrong. God said he does not change. And so I really believe, brothers and sisters, that we need, if there's a change that needs to be made, I believe that we need to make that change. Listen, God never walked away from us. He never left. We left. That's why you see it in, in, the, in, in, the, in the Garden of Adam and Eve. And I was talking to Pastor Rodney tonight, and he talked about how Adam and Eve were hiding. I believe a lot of people are hiding to this day. They're hiding things in secret that God can see. And the Bible says, I made the eyes and I see, I made the ears and I hear. How can we not think that God sees and knows all things? And so if there's a change that needs to be made, it has to be with us. Because the Bible says, just like in Jesus' time, in John chapter 2 and in Matthew chapter 21, judgment will begin in the house of God. It should shake us to the core when we see these ministers coming out and being exposed. It should shake us. To, listen, don't condemn them. Don't condemn these fallen ministers, these ministers that are being exposed. Pray for them. They don't need to be condemned. The enemy, listen, we're doing an, an, an enough of tearing down one another that Satan is just sitting back there laughing at us. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for one another. Let's pray for our pastors. Let's pray for our leadership. Let's pray for our government. Let's pray that God would step in because we were a country that was founded on the gospel of Jesus Christ and God does, does not change. America changed. 
and it's about time we come back to our first love. God bless you. If you enjoyed today's podcast, we ask that you would consider supporting this ministry. You can be a part of sharing the gospel to the lost through your financial support. God bless you.